In the previous video, you learned how to create a test using the graphical user interface called the Test Builder on K6 Cloud. In this video, you learn two other ways to create scripts and a little bit about how to use the K6 CLI. First, you can use the K6 Browser Recorder. Now, this recorder generates a K6 script from a browser extension, and it's available for Chrome and Firefox. I'm going to show you how to do it for Chrome, but the experience on Firefox will be similar. From the Chrome Web Store, go to the K6 Browser Recorder extension and click Add to Chrome. Click on Add Extension in the pop-up menu. If you don't see the K6 logo in your extensions, click on Extensions, find the K6 Browser Recorder, and then click on the little thumbtack icon to pin it to your toolbar. Click the K6 logo and click Start Recording. It may take a few seconds to start up, but you should see text that says Now Recording. Now navigate to your application and perform the actions you'd like to record. Make sure to let all of the resources on the page load fully before continuing. When you're finished, click on the browser extension again and click Stop. If you aren't signed into your K6 Cloud account, you'll be prompted to sign in now. After you do so, you'll see a screen asking you to save your recorded test. On this screen, you can change the name of your test and also decide whether you want your script to include correlation, static assets, sleep, and third-party domains. When you're done, click Save at the bottom. You'll find yourself in the K6 Test Builder, where you'll see a list of the requests that were recorded, conveniently grouped into pages. For each request, you can also specify headers, query parameters, checks, and variables. From here, you can run your test the way you would any other test builder test. You can also toggle over to Script View if you'd prefer to copy the script and run it locally instead of on the K6 Cloud. This is particularly good for troubleshooting. Another way to create K6 scripts is to write them in JavaScript using your favorite IDE. I'm using VS Code here. Start by importing modules. Here, I'm importing built-in modules so that I can make HTTP requests and add sleeps and checks in my script. Then create a default function. This is what K6 will iterate through. My function includes a single HTTP GET request, a check for the response status code to verify that an HTTP 200 is returned, and a sleep. To run the script, you can use the K6 CLI. K6 run, and then the name of the script, executes the script with one iteration and one user. If you'd like to specify the number of iterations and users, then try the dash "-i", and dash "-u", flags. Or, you could also include those in the script by adding test options. What if you'd like to use your K6 Cloud account? Type K6 Login Cloud from your terminal, and you'll be prompted for your email address and your password for K6 Cloud. Enter them both. Now you can either run your test locally and then send your results to K6 Cloud, or you can run the test on K6 Cloud itself. To run locally and send the results to the cloud, type K6 run, the name of the test, and then dash O cloud. The dash O stands for output. You'll see the test running in your terminal, along with a link that you can click on to follow along with the results of your local test. To run your test on K6 cloud, type K6 cloud, then the name of your script, and click on the link to view the results of your test. If you use this option, your test will execute on our cloud rather than your local machine. In this video, I showed you two other ways to create K6 scripts, using a browser recorder and writing a test using JavaScript in your IDE. Then I showed you some basic commands for the K6 CLI and how to use it to run tests locally, send your results to K6 Cloud, and how to run the tests on your K6 Cloud account. In the next video, we'll go over how to analyze your load testing results on K6 Cloud.